Beech trees synchronize on the summer solstice. Many plants, e.g. beeches, produce seeds irregularly, every few years. The question is how plants across the continent know whether a given year will produce seeds or not. Now researchers show that it may depend on the weather around the summer solstice. A team of researchers from France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Poland and New Zealand, led by Professor Mitchell Bogjevich from the University of Adama Mikovica in Poznan, published the results of his research in Nature Plants, reports in the AMU press release. There are plants with lean years when there are few or no seeds interspersed with fat years when there are so many seeds that the branches bend under them and there is no obvious mathematical rhythm in the order in which each year occurs amazingly these interannual fluctuations are synchronized between individual plants and often cover hundreds or even thousands of kilometers says professor bogjevich quoted in the Adam Mikovich University's press release. But what is the purpose of this strategy of alternating seeding and waiting? There is a method to this madness. If millions of trees produce seeds at the same time, there is a greater chance that animals feeding on these seeds will not be able to eat them all, but will, for example, move them somewhere and forget about them allowing the plants to reproduce and take over new areas. Years of abundant reproduction are usually followed by years of no seeds. And plants need them too. Thanks to this, plants not only collect resources for the next abundant seeding summer, but also take consumers of their seeds for survival. In the face of several years of famine, the population of these animals decreases, so the chance increases that the individuals that survive will not be able to eat all the seeds. Thus, the synchronous cycle of seed abundance and scarcity causes far-reaching changes in the environment. The strategy used by trees results in huge fluctuations in rodent numbers animal migrations and an increase in the number of diseases transmitted by wild animals. The question is what is the algorithm by which plants from different parts of the continent, without communicating with each other, can jointly determine whether they produce seeds or not. Scientists assume that it has to do with the weather. An example is European beach. Beech trees in Spain, Great Britain, Sweden, Romania, Poland and Greece maintain the same rhythm despite significant climatic differences between the south and north of Europe. This is surprising because many other processes, such as the initiation of flowering, generally start faster in a warmer climate. How do beech trees coordinate, reading, the weather? Despite such great distance, research by the team of Professor Bogjevich allowed the discovery of the existence of an astronomical clue that allows such precise synchronization. It is the maximum relative length of the day at the summer solstice. And it is this cue that the European beach uses to generate the ecological event with the greatest spatial synchronization on the continent. It turns out that all plants decide to reproduce based on the weather in June and July. We were inspired by recent research published in Science. Researchers from Switzerland found that the effect of temperature on leaf death varies depending on whether we consider the period before or after the summer solstice. The summer solstice is the longest day of the year, 
which always occurs on this the same day, simultaneously throughout the entire hemisphere, says Dr. Valentin Jernay. A researcher working at the Adam Mikovich University in Poznan, quoted in the AMU press release. Scientists looked at detailed changes in the level of response of beech trees to temperature and found that trees across Europe suddenly began to read the temperature on June 21, just in time for the summer solstice. The sudden reaction of the beech trees is truly extraordinary. As the days begin to shorten after the summer solstice, Beech trees in all corners of Europe open the window of sensitivity. What's really jaw-dropping is the fact that the change in day length during this time is really small. We're talking about a few minutes over the course of the week. However, trees seem to be able to recognize this difference, says Dr. Jakub Simkoviak from the University of Adam Mikovich in Poznan. Astronomers predict the star system will explode. It will be visible to the naked eye. NASA scientists have estimated that a new T. coronae borealis will explode within the next six months. When the explosion occurs, this system of stars, located about 3,000 light years from Earth, will be visible to the unaided eye. T. coronae borealis is a binary system consisting of a red giant and a white dwarf. The latter steals matter from its partner and is surrounded by an accretion disk. The two elements of the system are separated by about half the distance of the Earth from the Sun. The stars orbit each other every 228 days. The T. coronae borealis system is located in the constellation Corona North. Its explosions have already been observed twice. Most recently in 1946 and previously in 1866. Both explosions were visible to the unaided eye. The system then brightened approximately 1,500 times. Astronomers believe another one could occur within the next six months. This may be a unique opportunity to observe this rare phenomenon. The T. coronae borealis system currently requires a telescope to observe. But it may soon become bright enough to make equipment unnecessary. Astronomers are not sure when the explosion will occur. This is expected to happen any time until September. Although some forecasts say that we will have to wait until next year for fireworks. Once the explosion occurs and the system's brightness peaks, T. coronae borealis should be visible to the naked eye for several days and just over a week with binoculars before dimming, possibly for another 80 years. The system's stars are close enough to each other that when the red giant becomes unstable due to increasing temperature and pressure and begins to eject its outer layers, the white dwarf accumulates this material on its surface. The white dwarf's shallow, dense atmosphere eventually heats up enough to trigger a runaway thermonuclear reaction producing the nova we can see from Earth. Some white dwarfs steal material from their companions, but they do so irregularly. Others seem to stick to their schedule. T. coronae borealis falls into the latter category. This is the so-called return nova, i.e. a nova whose explosion has been observed again. Only a few similar systems have been discovered in our galaxy. Eighty years passed between the first and second known eruptions of the T. coronae borealis system. 
If this were to happen exactly again, we should expect another explosion at the end of 2025. However, astronomers noticed in 2016 that the system had brightened by about threefold. The increase in brightness was not as dramatic as during earlier outbursts, but this event showed that the system was becoming more active. Unfortunately, these phenomena are poorly understood and scientists cannot determine exactly when the explosion will occur. In fact, if the outbreak had occurred a few years earlier or later, it wouldn't have been a big surprise. Last year, Professor Bradley Schaefer of Louisiana State University noticed that the T. coronae borealis system had undergone a noticeable dimming before the 1946 event. Something very similar was recently observed. Based on the time from dimming to maximum brightness, Schaefer estimated that we should expect the explosion to occur between February and September this year. A throat patch that allows you to speak without the use of your vocal cords. Scientists have developed a flexible device that can be attached to the neck that allows people to speak without using their vocal folds. The camera uses artificial intelligence to read the movements of the throat and larynx muscles and convert them into speech. The self-adhesive device could be a non-invasive communication tool for people who cannot speak due to problems with the vocal folds commonly known as the vocal cords. This intelligent, skin-attached patch converts muscle movements in the larynx and pharynx into electrical signals, which are in turn translated into speech by a machine learning algorithm. The speaker then plays the sentences the person intended to say. What's more, this equipment not only detects speech-related movements of the throat and larynx, but also uses them to generate electricity, which means the device can be used without batteries. The device, described in Nature Communications, could theoretically help communicate in people with voice disorders caused by damaged or paralyzed vocal folds, but also in those recovering after surgery for throat cancer. Jun Chen from the University of California, Los Angeles admitted that the idea to develop such a device arose after he tired his voice after several hours of lectures. He began to think of ways to solve this problem and allow a person to speak without using the vocal folds. This is how the concept of designing a soft overlay was created. Enabling voice communication for people who have lost this ability or are recovering from a temporary voice disorder. Since the mid-19th century, scientists have known that the magnetic properties of some rigid metals can change under mechanical stress. An example of this is an alloy of iron and gallium called galphenol. In a 2021 study, Chen and his colleagues showed that similar properties could be achieved with a soft material made of tiny magnets embedded in silicon. In the new study, Chen's team took three years of research and developed a patch that responds to the subtle pressure exerted on it by the movement of the muscles in the throat and larynx. When a person makes the movements needed to speak, the material responds by producing electrical signals that can be translated into speech. The device is waterproof about the size of a large coin and weighs just 7 grams. Its texture resembles a rubber glove. It consists of five very thin layers. The outer layers of the patch are made of a soft, 
flexible silicone material. The middle one, made of silicon and tiny magnets, generates a magnetic field that changes depending on the movement of the throat and larynx muscles. The two layers surrounding the middle one, made of copper wire, convert changes in the magnetic field into electrical signals. The electrical signals are then fed into a machine learning algorithm that translates the impulses into speech. The algorithms had to be trained beforehand. For this purpose, recruited volunteers repeated short phrases hundreds of times. During this time, algorithms tracked the movements of the throat and larynx. In this way, the system learned to associate specific movements with a given phrase. During a technology demonstration with eight people who had no speech problems, the algorithm achieved approximately 95% accuracy. Effectiveness in accurately translating electrical impulses from the smart patch into speech. These tests were performed using the same short phrases and sentences on which the algorithm was trained. People saying them stood, walked and even ran during the tests. All this to show that the device works while in motion. Participants were also asked to pronounce the sentences aloud or silently. In both cases, the algorithm was able to translate muscle movements into speech. The test results are extremely promising, but please remember that the device is still at an early stage of development. The tests were limited to just eight healthy people saying a few phrases. No trials have been conducted with people with speech disorders. According to a 2005 study published in the journal, Laryngoscope, approximately 30% people will have a problem with voice disorders at least once in their lives. In turn, data from the Cleveland Clinic show that only in the USA from 3 to 9%. People suffer from aphonia or lose their voice. Aphonia is the loss of voice sonority. It may manifest itself as hoarseness, limited speaking in a whisper, or complete loss of voice. Existing technologies to help such people are often expensive or invasive. Moreover, many people simply do not have access to them. A new smart patch could make this type of assistive technology more convenient and less invasive.